Thank you very much. <laughs> so, and for my next trip. <laughs> all right, so I'm Josh Dustin. I, I've worked with Kevin for a while now. We worked together at Adobe. Um, and I left that much place. Um, I now work for HireVue. We do visual interviews. Um, kind of a cool company that I've worked for. Um, before that, I worked with uh, with Yellow Head Hospital uh, in Nobel and uh, in Obama Church. Now, um, so the reason I'm giving you this list of places that have been is because if uh, if you think you know me, and you don't know me from there, you're probably thinking of this guy. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> um, so I'm not seeing my whole set. I cut the bottom off. Try this. That's a little better. All right. Anyways, I, I can kind of see the you know, other, I can understand the problem there. So what you're gonna what you're gonna find with me and Kevin is that Kevin is the uh, the academic, he's the scholarly one. He's the one that thinks through what he's doing, and I picked this. Yoda, because not because Yoda's smart or scholarly, but because I think he kind of looks like Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's the truth. And, and what you're supposed to do is shut Usually he does. He, he wakes up in shirt. <laughs> in fact, that's what it said in the profile. It's like, I, I'm supposed to be the only one here in a shirt and tie. So uh, for me, on the other hand, I kind of just do stuff and see what happens. Kind of the Neanderthal style of. Uh, of playing with things. So that's me. Um, a couple things I do when I'm bored. Uh, since we've all seen a, way too many graphs about passwords in the last two days, I think I'll show you a picture of a rattlesnake. So these are some of the things I do when I'm bored. I go look for snakes. My other hobby besides security stuff. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. It's risky. That is a uh, lesson of my rattlesnake. And sometimes these, these guys can make it back. Who goes? Oh, what do you say? But um, anyways, that's uh, <laughs> what does the service have to say about that? What the hell? It's going to be a way that works for both companies. Um, <laughs> so, uh, alright, let's see. Thanks for talking. No thanks. You can't bring a box to find that. Anybody want to? Okay, no, no comments about my thing. Uh, all right, so now I have to uh, get my browser over. It brings it all the way down to Las Vegas. Oh, I didn't bring him here. I found him here. Yeah, but you said you my told him. No, no, no. I, said, I said, have you started your presentation yet? He says, no, I haven't started yet. Well, I said, well, you can use mine, and that way you can go look for snakes. He says, I'm not going looking for snakes. The next thing I know, he's got a picture well, of snake. That was the best of it yesterday. That was yeah. not snake the night before last. Um, okay, we practice this comedy routine often. <laughs> but I didn't mean to do that since the way it got to us. Come on. This is really mad at this other screen. Just for a while, let me move my screen. So let me grab it over there. And this is why we only have one presentation on the thing we do. I was just going to say, having to use a Windows XP VM in Ubuntu to uh, run a PowerPoint presentation is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do Oh, now it's going to be far. Alright, another thing I do when I'm bored is I go looking for people saved up with a car accident and sharing it. This isn't anything new. Um, this is one of a billion things shared by Johnny Long in his Google Hacking book, like edition one, that was published years and years ago. But I like to uh, search for people who've accidentally created a sim link uh, that shares the whole drive, um, which is kind of fun. Uh, you can find some, quite a few just little websites that share junk. Periodically, you find something that's actually interesting. Um, and you're, you're browsing the file system with the rights of the web server, which 
Yeah, you can see things like the password file. You can't see shadowing in the hashes because it's, uh, it's you know, the web server usually doesn't have those rights. But every once in a while, you'll find. I don't know. I, I like to go and find these and then send off an email to let the people who own them know. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, you'll find one that has like backup directory. This is just the name of the symlink, one of the text that symlinks back to slash. So we're looking at this portion of slash. Um, and I'm not picking on them, there's thousands of them. You just go playing through them. Um, so, like I said, in my spare time, I just go find new ones, email the company, phone them. Um, this guy has a backup directory, there's nothing in it. A while back, I actually came across one uh, that had a directory called backup. Because it's fun when people don't. They don't uh, chmod their backups, or they'll, they'll chmod their backups to be readable by, by whoever, which is great. Um, don't do that. So, okay. There. Can you see that? Okay, the code is kind of annoying. All right, so a while back, I saw one of these that just had a a backup directory, and in that backup directory, it has a file called md5. Um, has some other SQL-ish files. I um, look like a good SQL now. So this is a clean version. I've changed a few things because I, as much as I really wanted to just release this right now, I decided I better just redact it and release garbage information. So here's um, this is essentially what the file would like to have changed a little bit. Just a bunch of hashes. Um, notice that. They're not ending the way the SQL statement should, and that's because each one of them also has a username and email address and phone number and address. Um, and the hash. So you know, it's it's interesting that you can find hashes like that just through Google. Um, and this size. Oh come on. The size of the MD5 file there is. 1.2 gigs, which also kind of caught my eye. That's kind of big. So I grabbed out all of the hashes. They look like that, of course. You guys all know what that is. And let's just see if uh, how many we have. 1.2 gigs is kind of a lot. Ten million. Okay. And this is a real website for an IT company that just had their 10 million hashes shared because they had a sim link in the wrong place. Uh, that and they messed up their backups, really. Um, but uh, not only were they shared on Google, but they were indexed by Google. So if you search for one of these poor people's hashes, actually find that dump. It's not there anymore just recently. And the reason I'm not sharing it yet is that they said that they're going to notify everybody. Okay, now back to the end. Back to the end. Back to the end. <laughs> share your 10 million hashes, because uh, it makes baby sad. I actually ran the whole thing by my two-year-old, and that was the face she gave me, so I know for a fact that publicly sharing 10 million hashes makes babies cry. It, it really, there isn't anything worse than sharing your 10 million customers' hashes publicly. So what about sharing their plain text passwords? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of one thing that's worse than that too, but that may happen in prison. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, talking with Kevin, uh, you might have noticed we've changed up our, our uh, talk quite a bit because as we sat through the last two days, we noticed everyone else giving our talk. <laughs> so, um, there's a few bits that weren't overlapping, and that's what we've left in. Um, talking with Kevin, we've 
We've, like all of you, I'm sure, gone through dictionaries like crazy and downloaded all public dictionaries that people have put out there. Um, and we started noticing that uh, we're not getting any phrases, not very many phrases, uh, and you know, other words that just wouldn't end up in, in some people's dictionaries. So, uh, you know, there's, we started knocking our heads together about how to come up with phrases by using combinators and things like that. Uh, and just how big that ended up being when you're putting you know, mass like you got milk dictionary, trying to combine it with itself down to three, you know, three times over, it becomes really impossible. Um, and discussing how we can get people to do it for us. We want, we want words to be in the way that someone would use it in a password, um, you know, a, uh, to make sense grammatically and things like that. So Wikipedia is where we started uh, downloading the entire jump of Wikipedia. It's 40 some odd gig. And then indexing it word by word, um, taking two word combinations of, through the entire document, three word combinations through the entire document. And we found one of the ones that popped up for me that I was in fun was the Satrox, which is the scientific name of the snake that I should have been in But you know, and there's not a dictionary that would have Proto Satrox in it, really. Not one that I have. Um, and then we started using Twitter, and uh, I, I knew I wanted to mine Twitter information, but I didn't really know how, so I wrote the, the uh, World's Ugliest Ash script. I'm kind of glad you can't see that, because it's real bad. Um, so basically I just used their JSON um, API, grabbed the top 500 tweets or whatever word I supply it, and then shot out all the junk using graph. Uh, yeah, I don't even like respect JSON, I just, just use Cabot and grab it because it's just a way to why not, right? I just wanted it for just whatever. Um, if you're going to do this, if you're going to play with this stuff, don't use my script because like I said, it's ugly. I have it on my uh, blog, which is 7 Habits of Highly Effective Hackers.com. Uh, but don't use mine. Use these guys. These uh, four links here, they're all on the blog. They have gone ahead and taken that idea and written something pretty. Um, takes phrases and not just words. They've done all four of them are great. Uh, anyways, um, this was my original attempt at it. And I was trying to break the um, militarysingles.com dump. And what I wanted to do was see if a targeted, if I could get a targeted list of words. Um, I wasn't necessarily going for phrases at this point. But if I wanted to do a targeted list of words. So the words I handed are military, navy, sailor, boat. Afghanistan is spelled two different ways because people can't spell. And it's not at all because I even spelled it the first time and didn't want to have a screenshot. Um, dump all those words into a file called words. And uh, then sort of make it. End up with 4,000 unique words, 4,400. And that's, as you can obviously see there, um, I ran it with John, because I didn't have Ash yet. And uh, ended up, that of the 4,400 words it barked out, 1978 were passwords. And I got things like hoorah. And uh, you know, with, of course, rules got the, you know, the substitutions and zeros and things like that, hoorah. But uh, words that you wouldn't find in a dictionary, but are related to the Navy and military and people that uh, people use. And also, uh, you know, current things that are going on, which is kind of fun. Those don't often end up in dictionaries. The part that really disturbed me about all of this is um, I put my horrible script on my blog, and I put these screenshots on my blog, and 48,000 people hit my blog. And I thought there was more like this room of people that would be interested <laughs> in trying to crack people's passwords. I didn't realize there were 48,000 people out there that hang about passwords. That kind of terrifies me a little bit, honestly. Because I kind of see this group here as um, you know, the ones that are doing it in the open. And apparently there's a lot more. Um, how many people have downloaded Hashcat? You happen to know? Is it huge? I'm, I'm so curious about it. All right, so anyways, there's a lot of people up in there and stuff. Um, and really the fact that it came up with 1,900 passwords out of 4,000 words is kind of a reflection on the size of the data set and the number of hashes more than the method if I had. 
if I had a you know, billion hashes, I probably would have hit every one of those before you were words. But anyways, um, so my approach isn't super scientific, but let me get to remind you all that uh, that's, I'm that guy, I'm not Yoda. I love that kid. Just warms my heart. Um, one last note, and this kind of goes on with what was said earlier about uh, about writing down your passwords for for those that uh, you're unavailable. This is my wife's little brother, Jal. We had his funeral on Friday. Uh, crashed his motorcycle, and uh, although the service was lovely, I'd much rather that he would have slowed down a little bit on his motorcycle and been careful. So, um, to all of you, please slow down and be careful. Pass it on to Kevin. Kevin, do you want to plug your computer in rather than have yeah. try to play oh, online? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to bring up the slides online, but unfortunately, Windows wins. And the next one is He went to the Olympics. I'm not that spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about me. I'm a former director, uh, former IT director at Utah Valley University, uh, where I also still continue to teach there as an adjunct uh, professor of information security. Right now, I currently work at Adobe in uh, Utah in the uh, digital marketing business unit. Um, as with everybody, uh, the opinions here are, are my own. They represent those of my employers. So, so please you know, keep that in mind. Um, I invite, uh, being the last, uh, as I was talking to, to Josh and Burr and uh, Jeremy, as, as the con has gone on, our, our presentation has gone like, you know, from like this, you know, with each speaker, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And shorter right? So I invite your, your thoughts, your inputs and ideas, because that's kind of where I need to go. I, I, I'm, Kind of stuck here, and, and you'll see why by the time we get my end my presentation. Um, at the time when, when I first got into password cracking, I was working at Utah Valley University, and um, we were having a lot of problems with password uh, with, with password resets. And uh, we, we enforced uh, eight characters, upper, lowercase, and special number. That should sound familiar. That's a that's a recurring thing here. And, and, and we always say use up eight case uh, or eight characters upper door case number, and we expect some 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 ugly string of characters. Uh, but what users here is use something simple. You can remember eight characters upper case floor, and so we always get something like Facebook too. Right? <laughs> so so what, what what we expect and what we get are, are two completely different things. So I went looking for a solution, and this was, uh, I think this was in 2005, I found this article by Jesper Johansson, uh, who was a very, very bright mind uh, in Microsoft security uh, area. He uh, talks about passphrases and passwords, um, and he said, he, this, this is right out of, out of his article, he said, passphrase contains spaces, um, it's much longer than the vast majority of majority, excuse me, of words, and it breaks the seven plus or minus two rule. Seven plus or minus two rule was established in what was it, 58, 59, something like that. Very well known. So I said, okay, well, maybe the passphrase can be the solution to my, my, my user, my, my, my student reset issue. Um, so I'd go, at the first day of every semester, I'd go from room to room to room to room to room and say, I want you all to use a passphrase. I want you to use something like Elvis Rocks, I drive a Ford, my other car is a BMW, something like that, right? And I thought, this is going to be a solution to my problem. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I thought, is, is it really? Is that really? Is that really the solution? So I started thinking about, well, 
how do we come, how, how do people, how do users in real life, in the real world, how do users put together um, passwords? How are, they, how are they composed? And I know there's a lot of academic research there, but I, but I really wanted to find out, uh, were my students' passwords better or worse than the average? Uh, you know, yes, they're incoming freshmen into an IT program. I know I'm asking a lot here. Uh, what, what makes good passwords? Do they hit the complexity standards? Or was I getting Facebook too? The result was dismal. Um, at the time, I didn't know about, uh, about Hashcat. Uh, using John Ripper, I got 90% in about two weeks. And I was just devastated, because I thought, you know, here I've done all this work. Um, but how, how did these compare? So how do these compare to those dumped on the web? How, how are they? Are they similar? Are they better? Are they worse? So I did some research, and, and I started looking at some of the popular dumps. And, and because, once again, I'm, I'm coming from this academic background, I started looking at, at it statistically. And I'm, I'm not going to beat this all to death, but what we have here is we have the number of passwords um, at, a, at a given length, five characters, six characters, seven characters, and, and so on. And, and so I took a look across the smattering of dumps that we've seen. And there's Sony, there's MySpace, there's PHPBB, there's RockU. And if you'll notice, you all get kind of this, you know, this unique bell curve, but there's, and there's a handful, if you look, there's a real tiny handful up here that are, you know, beyond 10 characters or beyond 8 characters. Then I started looking at character type by position. What do, how do people, what do people put in what character position? So, um, position, you know, the, the first position, here statistically we see that there's, there's just under 10% of, of passwords use an upper in the first position and over 80% use a lower. Um, and, and this is the kind of curve you get. So I thought, well, okay, is, is, this, is this an anomaly for Sony or is this consistent? So I took a look at MySpace and I took a look at HPV, Rocky, and, and I started to see this trend, right? And this is generally, for the most part, I mean, we're all, we're, we're all professionals in this room. I'm going to call it that because we really are. We're very good at what we do. Uh, I started down here and below is garbage, right? Do you agree? I mean, if you've got a six character below password, you're, you're, you're just out of luck. Generally, we, we hit them in here, right? But then if you'll notice, the, the farther we get out here, the higher you, you have over 70% uh, as lower case. And, the, and once again, we all don't know the numbers of the end. So I said, well, how secure are passwords really? In sitting through uh, two days of this conference, you, we, we know the answer to that question. So, but what does a good password look like? What does a good password that a user really has, what does a good one look like? I know, yes, we want that, you know, that totally gibberish phrase, but we're not going to get it. Is it longer? Is it more complex? What does it look like? Um, can supposedly good, if, if, if a password, if we can call a password good, what is good? Um, I, and I realized as I was doing this, Matt Lewis suggested this. He said, uh, in the conversation he and I were having, he said, well, you know, um, as long as you're working with those open dumps that we have on the internet, the rock use, the PHPPB, the MailSend singles, you don't really know what you're getting. Are, are those raw? Are those tampered with? Um, what do you get? Are they full dumps? Um, we know from LinkedIn that the, that, that the first five characters were, were redacted. How much of LinkedIn don't we have? Uh, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Is, is there still more to come? I don't know. I'd like to think there is. Um, are, are people combining? When we see things uh, uh, posted to Facebook, are they multiple dumps? Is, are, is the stuff that we got on LinkedIn the stuff that he, that, that the original, uh, the guy that breached the site, was that stuff he couldn't get? Or are we just getting the leftovers, right? You just really don't know. The other thing that I found is there's a lot of file integrity problems. How many of you have plucked the hash off the web and it's got the original SQL injection statements in it? Or it's got the uh, original HTML codes in it. You know, you can see the JavaScript, or you can see the, the, the CSS stuff. So, you know, um, 
So I said, all right, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So I decided that I was only going to start working with hashes, just, just what we could find. And I parsed a single article. Ta-da, here we go. This was my first attempt, right? Um, I, I parsed a single article from USA Today. I think it was on, um, I think it was on Newt Gingrich running for president, uh, his, his, his nomination. Um, and, and my results were really disappointing. Um, I, I just didn't get much. In, in retrospect, you know, I know, I know you're out there all out. You, you posted one 1,500-word article and expected, you know, that to yield some great result, right? Okay, yes. Yeah, I really did. Um, I know now. At the time, I didn't know about pasted dorks or pass file or, or, or any of those other sites. So I was just, I was really, I was just kind of, man, where am I getting? I'm getting nowhere with this. And then Stratford happened. And Stratford happened in December. And I was getting ready for bed one night, and a tweet from Kevin Mitnick came through, and he said, you know, Stratford been up. And so I immediately, I told my wife, I said, don't wait up, I'm gone. And, and at 4 o'clock in the morning, here I am, started working. Frank, right? Now, so by now, by the time I had started working this, Jeremy was probably at what, 80%, 70%? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, uh, you know. But hey, for me, it was, for, for me it was you know this this land you know this landmark moment, and that's when I started learning about uh, Markov rules. I started learning about mangling rules. I started learning how to write my own mangling rules, and then I went. Um, then a few months later, I went to uh, DEF CON where a, a guy from Sandisk. If you're in here, I apologize because I don't remember your name. Uh, he talked about GPU cracking, which was just like wow. And there was this big debate on going on over who, whether what was it? There was one other program. Had the charge you talking Something like that versus Adam, and the two of them were going back and forth from the audience. You know, well, I fixed that problem, and, you know, and I just hey, GPU cracking. That, that's this is this is it. So I started. So my my. Uh, research if, with what I've done uh, with the Jesper Johansson stuff, he talks about passphrases and passwords. Jesper Johansson says that a passphrase contains spaces and a password does not. So I said, okay, I'm going to go start expanding on this and just see what I can find here. In April of 2012, I left UVU for Adobe. And this is where I met Josh. Um, and he and I, as we started brainstorming more and more and more and more over Stratford, we just kept going, how can we get more? We're just about got it all. We're just about done. We're just about done. You know? And Jeremy's, you know, Jeremy's off looking for something new. <laughs> so um, we're, just, we're, we're, just, we're just going over and over and over again. And bang, LinkedIn happens. And, and, and bless his heart, uh, Adam kicks, uh, they kick loose a quick version of a hashtag that allows us to ignore the first five characters and off, off we go with 800,000 hashes. You know, I got a new start, I got a fresh start on life. So Josh and I had several highs and lows. Um, the good news is that there were hundreds of thousands cracked between Strat 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 and LinkedIn. And we were just woo woo, you know. And by now, Jeremy's going, man, I sure this, you know, this LinkedIn dumps old news. Um, so we were all excited, but there was bad news too, because Josh and I were definitely running out of word lists. Now, we, we got, you know, got mail, 18 and 1. What else, what else did we have? We just, we, 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 you know, we tapped this Twitter stuff. We tapped this. We're just, we're literally running out of, of words. I, I did an, an, uh, an interview with Jeremy Kerr, and he said, Kevin Young is at a loss for words, literally. <laughs> and, and it was absolutely true. Because we're just running out of dictionary. And, and you know, plus Jeremy's heart, you know. I mean, we're trying, you know, it's like the little engine that could here. There was even worse news. Uh, it, it, no matter what we do, we can't keep up with Jeremy, right? <laughs> so, you know, we said, hey, let's try, let's try sentences. We're, we're going to start trying sentences. We're, we're going to really try. Too bad we don't have a reliable source of sentences. And that's when we said, you know what? Let's use books. Why, can, why can't we use books? Books are a reliable source of sentences, and there's hundreds of thousands of out there. So um, I found a place called Project Gutenberg, uh, www.gutenberg.org. They've got hundreds of thousands of public domain books. They're out there. 
Um, there's classics. There's the, the, the you know King James version of the Bible. All lots of versions of the Bible. Poetry, anything you can imagine that's been around for decades of time um, it is out there, right? And, and this is about the time where Josh said, hey, you know, Wikipedia has got sentences too. This is kind of where our worlds kind of collided. Boom, right there. Uh, we also said, hey, what about the Library of Congress? The U.S. Library of Congress. It's got, you know, 600 bazillion billion, you know, books. So he said, okay, these are great sources of books. Now what do we do with them? Because now we've got real, real world phrases. There's keys to using. If you plan on doing this, keep these things in mind. Uh, a book has got to be easy to obtain. It's got to be easy to obtain. Uh, there's authentication issues. You, you can screen scrape. That's not really a fun way to do it, but it can be done. Uh, download. There, there's bandwidth limitations. Some places, some sites charge. Um, some, there's a cost to it. There's different formats. Plain text, are you going to get them in PDF? How are you really going to get these? There's also copyright issues. We thought, hey, Harry Potter, this is at the time, right? Harry Potter is really big right now. How could we get the Harry Potter script? Right? But that's a you know, copyright that you start dumping phrases from a Harry Potter movie and Warner Brothers or Paramount or somebody, somebody's going to be all over you for that. We didn't want that. So just as a test, I pulled Alice in Wonderland, War and Peace, Call of the Wild, Tale of Two Cities, and, and Wizard of Oz. And I pulled those down. Okay. Now you can imagine, War and Peace alone. You can imagine what, okay, now what do you do with this? Well, there's kind of a four-step process that you have to go through if you're going to do past phrases, from, if you're going to create words lists from a book like we did. You've got to go get it. You got to, you've got to have a way to go fetch it. Uh, I use GovWget, curl works. If you want, if you're brave, you can go screen scrape with the browser. Um, but as was mentioned in the previous talk, there's user agent issues, there's authentication issues, there's, there's download bandwidth. You know, they monitor your bandwidth. If you do go to do it, I recommend you, you know, send them 50 bucks and, and you know, do it slowly so you don't get kicked off. One of the next things we did was we, we scrubbed it for punctuation, we scrubbed it for paragraphs, line feeds, uh, carriage returns, semicolons, anything. We stripped it all off and we made everything lowercase. Because we're going to let mangling rules do, do the heavy lifting here. Then we set a maximum number of words or characters. We said, all right, if, if we've got this thing, if we've got this long list of words, um, how do, you, how do you know when you're done? You know, do you, do you know by words it was a dark and stormy night? Do you do, uh, when you smash that all together, you know, do you take that whole thing? Do you take pieces of it? Limit your, you know, we started to, to, to limit the size. And then obviously you gotta write, you gotta write that to uh, the disc. Um, it gets big quick when you do it like this. And I'll talk about op optimizing it here in just a second. Um, so if we take it was a dark and stormy night, if we use that as our uh, as our as our starting phrase, the first thing we do is we take the word it, and then we go get it was, and then we go it was a, it was a dark dot 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 all the way to it was a dark and stormy night. Then we go was was a was a dark was a dark and was a dark and stormy night. Then what? Right? A, A dark, A dark and, A dark and stormy, A dark and stormy. So we start marching through this. And the, the words that are highlighted are, typical, are, are are more likely candidates. It's not that the other phrases aren't legitimate. It's just that these are the more likely candidates. It, very seldom will you use a dark and stormy night, uh, or excuse me, a dark and stormy. That doesn't make sense. If you're looking for a phrase, you're going to do a dark and stormy night. Or dark and stormy. So we started to, hey, there might, we, we might have something here. The other thing that we, 
that, that we found really quickly is you want to optimize this because you get a lot of duplicates. You get a lot of duplicates. It was. How many times do you think, you know, in a, over the course of War and Peace or, or Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, right? It was, it was, it was. It's going to be sprinkled all through there. And, and we found this out statistically as we started ripping through these books, was we started with over six million eight-character uh, phrases. And by the time we optimized it, we had about a million. But that changes the deeper you go into the length of your phrase. But it's significant. And this is what we started getting. Public administration LinkedIn, red, orange, yellow, blue, respect one another, right, red, LinkedIn. We started getting, oh, security breach, 911. Um, we started getting uh, professional friends, information communication. We started getting all kinds of, this is too hard. Right? This is too hard, 22. Obviously, here's where the mangling rule took in. This is where the, uh, this is where the phrase kicked in. Will happen now. Wonderful planet. Looking at magazines, something that matters. We started to actually see some success. Now, granted, we're not getting that 80%, but we're working on definitely the fringes of that high end. These are some of the true passphrases, just for Johansson from Microsoft. These are some of the true passphrases we've got because they contain spaces. Am I ever going to see your face again? Question mark. Now, if you think back, how many of you have been cracking passwords for five years? How many of you have been doing this 10 years? Okay. Think back 10 years ago, did you ever, did you ever think you'd get an am I ever a 36 character uppercase, lowercase with a special? Not, not even. Not even in your wildest dreams did you think you'd get something like that. 29 characters. In the beginning was the word. From Genesis to Revelations, right? You never thought you'd get those kind of phrases, but here we are. We're all sitting in a room discussing this just like it was old hat. These are passwords, just what Johansson says, that a password doesn't contain a space. There is no faith but what we make. Give me liberty or give me death. East of the sun, west of the moon. That's, those are, you know, if, if I said, 10 years ago, if I said, I have a 26 character password, 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 uh, password, <laughs> what are the chances that you crack it? You would have said, it can't be done. So I went back to the original and I thought, OK, so now that I've had the opportunity to work with raw hashes, um, what, what, where are we? How does this compare to everything else that, we, that, that I'd already seen? And statistically, if you'll notice, we've got that kind of that bell curve that kind of drags off up here in the high numbers. I took a look at the character type by position, and, and, and the funniest thing happens. Once again, we've got the exact same thing. We've got a high percentage of the first characters in uppercase, and then it immediately drops off by the time you hit the second character. The digits and lowercase start to converge in the middle, and then they drift off again. So this was really cool, this, because it kind of validated what I thought about my research in, in my stuff at UVU. It validated what we'd seen. It matches what we're seeing against Rock Cube. It matches what we're seeing against um, the other notes. Josh came up with uh, his, his uh, mining Twitter. And we realized then that this is great for, um, for, for trendy words. Right? You, think, you think about what is a trendy word today and will it be a trendy one six months from now? Right? Edgy. There's a word that you hear a lot right now. It's really edgy. Right? In a year from now, will that be will that still be popular? Two years from now, will it? Probably not. But if we get it done two years from now, can we go back and get today's today's word? So we said, well, okay, we've mined books. What else can we mine? And this kind of took me full circle of where I where I come from. 
because I said, hey, let's go get Forbes, let's go get USA Today, oh, let's go get the entire contents of Wired Magazine, the entire contents of Time Magazine, but boom, once again, we ran into copyright issues. So I don't know. If any of you have any thoughts, thoughts there, please, I'd, I'd love to discuss them. I, I don't know if the context in which we use sentences that happen to appear in Time Magazine, I don't know if that's <laughs> legal or not. If, if anybody has an idea, please. Talk to me because I, I don't know. What? I said move to a different country. Move to a different country. <laughs> so knowing what else, with all this, we went back and looked at Stratford again. Um, we got some rather, shall we say, interesting passwords. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, found it, I found it very interesting. What was his mind at that time? I'm going to leave that completely alone. <laughs> now you can see, you know, this one obviously, this one obviously is just a repeat. Right? That's clear that. You are full of manure. <laughs> Ghost in the Machine. What is Ghost in the Machine? <laughs> it's the title of a music album. It's also the title of a it's book. Book. Yeah. book. So that's kind of what we found as we, sure enough, we went back to Stratford and we found the same curve, statistically the same curve. And if you lay those all on top of each other, this is kind of a confusing graph. I need, I, matter of fact, that's why I wasn't here yesterday, is I was in a class on data visualization over a black hat. Uh, I'm trying to get vis better at the visualization of this kind of stuff. But if you look, uh, if you overlay those on top of one another, rock you to LinkedIn to military signals to everything, you have to start to see some statistical trends pop up here. And it, it actually kind of holds. So, what's next? Well, uh, we're, we're always looking for new sources, right? We've done album, we, we've, done, uh, we've done music, we've done song titles, we've done every social security number in America, we've done all the books of the Bible, book, chapter, and verse, we've done, you know, we're always looking for new sources. Um, one of the ones that I sent to Josh the other day, is I sent him a little uh, bash, quick bash, quick and dirty bash script that I did that can mine the Social Security Administration for first then last names over the last, uh, what is it, going back to what, like 1900 or something like that? Like that. Um, I, really, I really want YouTube comments if anybody does a good way of mining I never want to see YouTube comments. <laughs> well, that's the point. That's, 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 that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. Um, <laughs> What are some good historical slash snapshot points in time that we could use for this kind of work in the future? Uh, I mentioned the med visualization methodologies. The previous speaker had some excellent visualization. Yes, sir. I was the, looking back in time, uh, a lot of uh, message boards and forums, you could get the dates of the messages. Uh, and they had the archives going back many years. And so you could mine, if you needed a particular date range, you could Mine all the forums. I didn't even thought about forums. That's a great one. Forums. Yes, sir. Maybe the Wayback Machine you could match with. Oh, so, like you take your new website, bring them back, and you can match with them. And another thing is, uh, I don't know how far you are from Salt Lake City, but uh, the linguist, the linguistics department at Brigham Young has a group that is assembling corpuses, corpi. Of Exactly. What is it, Mr. Ware, Dr. Ware? What is it? Corpuses or corpi? Uh, I think it's corpuses, but I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you call yourself corpus. Uh, <laughs> it's corpus. Uh, collection. Just file sharing networks, BitTorrent, you know, Pirate Bay type links. I mean, there's an unimaginable amount of data there. And if you, but if you threw away everything that was like a, a movie, you know, you could probably just get an amazing amount of text to mine. Okay, that's a good idea. I hope you're remembering all these jobs. Two ideas. Okay. If, if, if you're targeting the public leaks as opposed to leaks like LinkedIn or something, do right. 4chan. That way you're going to pick up slang and lingo of a certain age group and a certain uh, yeah. IQ level 
So, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so that way you're going to pick up all the new slang or whatever. Uh, other things that I think would be interesting, and we rolled it into the contest two years ago, using rules that are used to manipulate a single word against past phrases. So we did things like we took, well, we did the Empire Strikes Back. And we took all three word and two word phrases and then put things between each word, different so sentences. So Empire the strikes um, light ball back or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but see, because all, all in our head, all of our rules are based on, oh, I have an individual word, I'll manipulate that individual word with my rule. Put something at the beginning, do something like that. But what about a rule based manipulation of? For past phrases, because let's pretend that we, this is we 20 years. Took, I, I, I ended up mining the first 14, first 15,000 books um, <coughs> from uh, Gutenberg Project. Right? I ended up mining 15,000, the, the, the full text, 15,000 books, because you can actually get them in dot text, dot txt format. Um, and it was great. Five minutes. Um, and then I, for, for about the first for a thousand of those books, I took them and I, I spun them around backwards, and nobody spells A Tale of Two City backwards. I, my, my, my results were just, they just didn't get much there. So there's another hand back there. Yes, I just uh, recall that the IMDb, the movie database, yes. has a section on their website with famous quotes from each picture. We've tried actor names, we've tried movie names, scripts, scripts, if you, if you get a good name, scripts is good. I hadn't thought about famous quotes like yippee ki -yay from, from, uh, from Lincoln, or from uh, Susan <laughs> I'm sure that's in it. Um, the other thing we were, the other thing we're wondering is our passwords, oh, I'm sorry, there's one hand back here. Excuse me, I didn't miss your mission. Um, uh, transcripts that are often provided on the websites for archives of various comics, including web comics. Oh. Dilbert, for example, has full transcripts. Okay. Can you the EU rule of which is the handcast that is the latest version? It's the title rule, and it um, capitalizes the EU letter, which comes after the base version. Oh, nice. They're specially made for this case. And Pushcat um, is continuing on the problem which has this rule. So it's not in JSON, but it's in Pushcat. Nice. We have to do that and then remove the spaces. Yeah. Uh, you guys, we, we can easily do a creative, <laughs> you know, <laughs> creative corner like <laughs> you like. It's important to that discussion as well. This is, it, 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 I, need, I need to wrap this up here. This is an infographic that's kind of cannibalized from uh, Wired Magazine. And, and they said that this is like this purple, this big purple circle here. There's 2,986,100 terabytes of business email a year. Right? New Facebook content a year, 182,500 terabytes. Google index, I think this, I can't remember if it was Health South or Kaiser Permanente's uh, health records, the Hadron Collider output. So we still got a lot of data that we haven't even come to even touch the surface up here. Um, I, 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 need to, I need to shout out to a, a lot of the people in this room. You've taught me so much. Adam, I, you know, Adam and I were carrying a ton of, on a conversation the other night. Jeremy's been great. Her, Matt, there's so many of you in, your room, in the room that have helped me out. Um, I also owe a lot of thanks to Rock You. I think we all need <laughs> <laughs> Rock You. They've given us all so much. Uh, <laughs> if you have any comments or suggestions, here, here's how you can reach me. Uh, I'm IT3700, which is the, the, the course number that I teach uh, on Twitter. I, you can find me on the hashtag channel, uh, or you can drop me an email at kevin.p.young at gmail.com. Okay? Thank you very much.